Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to unbox and do a quick hands-on with the brand new Nubia Red Magic 5G. This device is featuring some of the latest tech, the Snapdragon 865, the X55 modem, of course, for 5G connectivity. But not only that, this device is going to carry the number one feature that I've actually wanted to see on Snapdragon 865 devices since the announcement that they made late last year at the Qualcomm Summit. And that's the capability of actually running 144 hertz on a display on a mobile device. We've been used to it on mobile on PCs, obviously playing games directly there with, uh, with displays running at 144 hertz. But today we finally have it on a mobile device. Again, this is the initial impressions of the brand new Red Magic 5G. Make sure to check out their website. They're running actually a campaign where you're able to win some of the stuff. And not only that, uh, I'll give you guys links in the description below to find out more about when this is going to be available and when the pre-orders are going to start. This is TK. Let's check out the Red Magic 5G. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we have new videos on the channen. So as far as the specifications, we have the Snapdragon 865, the X55 modem for 5G with SA and NSA support. We have a 6.65 inch uh, 144Hz AMOLED display that's running at 1080p. We have cooling with uh, liquid cooling uh, options as well as fans to be able to allow the device to stay cool for extended gameplay sessions. Triple camera setup with Sony uh, lenses in the back. Air triggers or basically gaming triggers that are available on the top right and left of the device and I'll share with you guys what that looks like. And of course, a customizable RGB light strip in the back, similar to what we've seen from uh, Red Magic in the past. Uh, gaming stereo sound with DTS 7.1 with a 3.5mm headphone jack. Of course, we have uh, 8GB of DDR5 RAM with 128GB of UFS 3.0 storage inside of this device. Last but not least is a 4500 milliamp battery that is obviously going to give us extended gameplay and very nice with the cooling options so that we can keep everything running smoothly. Qualcomm AptX as well as 5G. Opening up the box, we're greeted right away with the actual device. It is wrapped and of course we have uh, some writing here. Hasta la victoria siempre. Uh, so basically, you know, keeping uh, moving forward and winning, of course. Um, and of course, here is the Red Magic 5G. We have the Red Magic logo here. We see the 5G logo. We have a triple camera setup in the back with dual tone LED flash. And of course, we can still see here right there the Red Magic logo. We'll put that to the side for a second. Let's see what else comes in the box. Uh, we have a USB. Here it is. So this is a USB type A to USB type C cable with red coloring. So this is going to be obviously our charging uh, and of course, uh, data transfer cable. Last but not least, we also have the charger that's built in here. This is a European style charger, not a US style charger. And it is USB-C, uh, well, USB type A to the USB-C cable that comes in there. Last thing on the side here, we just have the instruction manual and of course the SIM ejector tool. Now, the first thing we're going to notice, obviously, on the device is a couple of things. A, uh, the actual construction in the back is actually very smooth. There's a little bit of a bump here for where we get into the actual camera. Again, mentioned to you guys, we have triple camera setups in the back. We have the logo present all the way on the bottom, and this one should illuminate, as well as the red magic uh, wording here that should also illuminate, as we saw on the back of the box. We have 5G as far as the moniker. On the left side, we have the Pogo pin connectors for the dock. Now, I was not sent the dock, so I don't have access to that. But I would imagine that this should be compatible with the dock that we saw last year with both the Red Magic uh, devices that came out that supported it. Uh, we have one of the vents sitting here. This is going to be the intake vent sitting on the right side. And hopefully you guys show that right there. Uh, we also have the gaming trigger. This button actually doesn't work the same way we see it on OnePlus devices. Turning this on jumps the actual UI or changes the UI into a game uh, gaming center or essentially like a gaming uh, launcher. On the right side, we have uh, basically a placement for one of the triggers and the secondary triggers. These are not the fingerprint sensors as the fingerprint sensor is actually beneath the display. So we have an, basically an in-display fingerprint sensor. We have a volume rocker present here with the out. Uh, this is the vent out. So think of it this way. The air comes in this way, comes out the other volume rocker and of course a power button on the side uh, front facing camera and of course proximity sensors on that uh, on there on the top we have one of the microphones this is considered to be the noise cancelling microphone so you guys can see it right there as well as a three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the bottom we have a bottom firing speaker as well as a USB-C and of course the SIM card and this is going to be able to support up to two SIM cards if you need it uh, but keep in mind that this bottom firing speaker married with the top earpiece that's present ever so nicely up there will give us the ability of having that stereo speaker so 
we're not getting front facing speakers, but we're getting a front facing top uh, piece as well as a bottom firing piece to the side. When it comes to the specifications on the cameras in the back, we have a 12 megapixel main camera shooter and uh, an eight megapixel wide angle lens, an ultra wide lens, and a two megapixel macro lens for those really good close up images. Last but not least, we have a 12 megapixel camera in the front for obviously selfies and front facing video. When we're looking at the actual UI, overall you'll notice this is a custom UI. It does have some gestures, unfortunately no swipe down for notification. Uh, there is an app drawer I can swipe down. And right now, if you notice right there, I am running this at 144 Hertz. So let's go ahead and jump real quick into the settings right there. We'll go under display and we'll notice first and foremost, obviously is the brightness level. We can also customize that there and I'll go back. Everything's fast here. Uh, and uh, you wanna be careful. So first and foremost, by default out of the box, it does come out with 90 Hertz. You're able to turn on 90, 60 or 144. Keep in mind that the screen resolution will default to the maximum resolution refresh rate that the application that you're using will run. So if you're playing a game that the max refresh rate for that is supported at 60 hertz, even though you have 144, the device will run at 60, and that's basically what's explained here. Anything beyond 60, so at 90 or 144, the system will default back to whatever the game's, the game's maximum refresh rate. Um, we're able to also turn on night light. That's something that obviously you can turn on uh, directly in dark mode. It was not turned on. I did turn it on. You notice it does change the entire UI and it is based on Android 10.0 out of the box. So we're getting that built in native dark mode support. Um, low brightness flash release, obviously all of the things and customizing the Q color here for color calibration. It is DCI 3 P3 setup. You can go with ARGB or sRGB racing or standard. And of course you could see the different color ca uh, calibrations that are built in. Uh, you're able to go even more for shooting uh, MOBA, of course, as G GCP. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it at DCI 3. This is the one that came out of the box and it seems to be doing fine. But again, you can customize it to your heart's content. Um, dual card mobile network, that's as I mentioned, dual SIM card, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, more connectivity me methods, VPN, NFC for obviously access, screen protection, as well as resetting private DNS and airplane mode. All of those things are built in. And I am testing this out on T-Mobile in the US. So I'll go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi. And there is an actual button that you need to turn it on. So if you get this device, once you purchase it, and you notice that it's only showing 4G, it's actually because you have to turn on the 5G switch for it to actually show it up. So other than that, you'll notice right there, we're getting 5G on the top. Uh, we have uh, notification status bar configuration, display, which is where we were. And again, as I said, you guys, we're running at 144 Hertz. This is like crazy level speed. And again, you can customize it to run to your level. Um, keeping going down here real quick, we have the uh, always on display. That's the one that we saw before. I have it customized to run with this one. And you'll notice right there, I'll go ahead and keep it. That's the always on running display. And then we can see the, the placement of the fingerprint sensor. And you can customize, of course, and you can do your own. We have native support for gestures and or 10.0 gestures, of course. Um, lock screen and launcher themes. We can go in there and customize wallpapers, launcher settings, as well as owner's information. And of course, pocket mode. Uh, sound options, we are able to go in and customize the options. So we can go and customize the emergency alerts, the voice alerts, all the stuff that you normally expect to be able to customize in here. Uh, next, we can also jump into accounts, Google accounts. Uh, the Neo AI gives us the ability of basically having smart gaming, uh, to be able to basically get just a good gaming experience of keeping the device running cool while we're gaming. And Neo Speed also does the same thing, faster startups, intelligent scheduling, and of course, night uh, repair and screen adjustment to be able to allow the device to run at the best resolution possible. So even though we select 144, it doesn't run at 144 all the time. The UI obviously will run at 144 because that's something that we are able to push. Next we have obviously is the color LED. This is the RGB on the back. And again, as I mentioned to you guys, we are able to customize not only the logo for the actual uh, Red Magic logo, but also the Red Magic word here for the colorful RGB that we have sitting in the back. Um, you can set it up to have obviously some information come up when you're charging, alarm, clock, no incoming calls, notifications, and media atmosphere LED. Um, when it comes to basically navigation and gestures, as I mentioned to you guys, I'm running standard full screen gestures. You can go with standard navigation bar or other gestures if you'd like. Um, game docking station, this obviously will work great if you have the, uh, the docking station. Um, so by default, the docking station gives you the ability of having an extra headphone jack to be able to uh, make sure that the cables are aligned correctly, as well as the connectivity to a, an RJ45 connection for faster connection. Since I don't have this, this function will not work for me. And if you do turn it on, it will disable itself after some time. We have uh, digital well-being and parental control. And of course, under more features, we have Super Snap for the quick, uh, basically screen capturing. We're able to actually initiate it from the top. If I'm not mistaken, I would think it was present here just a second ago, right there. Super Snap sitting up there. And of course, we have the ability of the, setting up the split screen, picture in picture, and one-handed mode. 
um, and the one-handed mode will basically run for the most part in in lieu of what the Google Assistant is doing. So you notice right there, I actually used it what we normally get with the Google Assistant, and that initiates the one-handed mode. And you can configure it to go back by changing it yourself. Uh, Double-click to light up, and of course, raise the hand to a screen on. This, depending if you want to do that, just keep in mind it will use more power. Uh, we do have screen unlocking options as far as fingerprint, face unlock, as well as pin. So you're able to customize those. Privacy, location information is pretty standard. Um, app information the same way. And of course, other system settings give us access to language input, storage, uh, resetting option, backup accessibility, developer options, of course. And uh, you do need to turn that on under the about device. Uh, system updater gives us access to running the update system. So we'll see if there's any updates available for our device. Again, I am connected right now to 5G and it is going ahead and just check that. Um, and of course, About Phone just gives us more information about what we have here. So it is the Red Magic 5G. It's running Ma Red Magic OS version 3.0. And again, 8 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of internal storage with the Snapdragon 865, can obviously in combination with this uh, X55M modem that gives us the ability of having 5G connectivity on this device. Now, as far as DUI, it's pretty simple. It's more of a kind of a, a broken down version of what we've seen with the Pixel launcher. We have the Google Feed sitting here on the left side and we're able to basically go through it. Um, there is no shortcuts. You are able to basically double click on it and open up this nice little, uh, basically this is the watch option. There is support for live wallpaper. So let's go ahead and bring in here. And as far as the launcher, we have the ability of customizing the desk layout and the home screen style. Of course, you can change that widget, arrange icons, and of course, wallpapers. And I really like this nice little breathing wallpaper that we have present in the back. Uh, overall, the air triggers are going to be really cool, but mostly the best way to basically enjoy gaming on this device, you're going to have to basically enjoy it by turning on the gaming center. Um, as far as the camera itself, uh, we have basically photo mode, pro mode, camera family gives us access to a lot more options that we've seen in the past. Last but not least, we have a photo mode. Under the video, we have the option of switching between handheld and of course tripod. So it basically adjusts the stabilization based on that. And of course, we're able to go into the customizations. Uh, the maximum resolution that we're able to shoot on the back sensor is going to be 8K, as you've probably seen in the past. 4K, 4K at 60 frames per second, uh, full HD at 60 frames per second, and regular full HD in 720p. And of course, on the front-facing sensor, we're basically, let's go ahead and go back, switch over. And on the front-facing sensor, uh, we're actually capped at 1080p. So we don't have 4K60 on the front-facing sensor, but keep in mind that this is running uh, pre-release software. So this device actually has not actually been released. So keep in mind that whatever I'm showing you today are gonna be basically based on pre-release software. Let me go ahead and show you a quick uh, front-facing video and back-facing video using the, uh, basically the maximum resolution we're able to get out of this device. This is going to be a quick front-facing sample of the Red Magic 5G camera. We are capped at 1080p, uh, but again, uh, we should be able to get much better footage from the back sensor. Let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor in the back at 4K 60 frames per second. Went ahead and switched over to the back-facing sensor. We're going to be doing 4K 60 frames per second right now. Again, just a quick sample of the audio and the video. And hopefully, I'm not sure if you guys are able to hear the birds in, uh, in the actual area around me. Uh, but the main benefit here, obviously, is that this is going to be pretty good using the main sensor, the 64 megapixel sensor that we have from Sony. Uh, but we're also able to go into all the way to 8K at 24 frames per second. So let me go ahead and switch over to that and show you guys a quick sample that I just did in the backyard, mostly intended to show you the benefit of having 8K. I personally wouldn't be shooting in 8K all the time, mostly because of the fact that it'll eat up a lot of my storage. But not only that, it's capped at 24 frames per second, which is not really very useful for me. 30 is the bare minimum and 60 is the ideal location for me as far as frame rate. So that was a quick sample of the audio and video from videos. Let's go ahead and play some music directly on the stereo speakers that we have here. This is called Jumbo by Alex Scrindo. This is an NCS release. Let's go ahead and play that. And just for reference, the volume is at 100%. Sounds really, really good and should be able to do a good job, of course, while we're gaming. And speaking of gaming, let's go ahead and turn on the game launcher. And that's pretty simple. Just go ahead and flip the switch up the top left. And you are straight jetted into the actual uh, Red Magic system. There's a couple of options here and we'll get a chance to explain some of the options that we get overall. Uh, by default, all the games that you have installed will show up in here. If you do not see them, you can go ahead and add them manually. You can also use a carousel or a grid. Go ahead and reduce the volume ever so nicely here, bring it down. And of course, so Arena of Valor and we have, uh, you know, Real Racing 3 and of course I have PUBG. 
mostly because of the higher frame rate and the compatibility that we get there. Uh, now PUBG is rated to run at a, that's basically the most efficient uh, frame rate. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, system here. You're able to also use the handle grip if you have that from previous generations of uh, Red Magic devices. Uh, last but not least, you can go into the customization. This is the personal settings. You can see the health of the device, the Red Magic time, fan configuration, automatic or rapid cooling, which turns on the fan much, much higher. I'm gonna bring this over to the microphone for you guys to see it. And I know I said the word see it, I meant for you guys to hear it. And of course we can reduce it. On average, it doesn't actually play that hard and you don't actually hear it. Uh, recording settings, this is basically for when you're playing games, uh, net connection to be able to make sure your connectivity is actually at the best. Uh, basic configuration as far as LED constant brightness uh, configuration, as you guys could see right here, the LED actually do permeate on the back and I have them customized to run like this. Um, and those are generally in the gaming mode. And of course we have the ability of going into health. Uh, if I swipe from the right, we have a shortcut of more of a gaming center. So game enhancement, uh, magic voice, of course, touch button, handler, one click combo, uh, crosshair assist that adds a little crosshair in the middle of the display. Of course, we have the ability of customizing the fan speed so we can turn on and turn off the fan the same way we can turn it on here. And you notice that there's that little visual uh, indicator here that turns on. We're also able to toggle the 60, 90, and 100, uh, basically. So let's go ahead. You can jump between 60 hertz, 90 hertz, and 144. Switch to 144, and again, it depends on the picture image that you're getting there. 4D shock for the vibration, so that it uses the vibration systems, and it's only compatible with certain games. So we'll go ahead and turn that on there once it's compatible. So PUBG would be one of them. Block SMS messages, block calls, super snap for screenshots, standby, going back to the game space, back, docking mode if you have the dock, if it doesn't, unfortunately this doesn't work, and of course, touch sensitivity uh, blocking. We're also able to actually configure the brightness levels over here. So let's go ahead and switch over. We'll go ahead and launch PUBG. I'll give it a second. If you notice PUBG did turn on and 4D shock does show up. So I can turn off 60. And what I wanted to show you guys is how the actual refresh rate, you can see it right there on the actual screen, it's changing. So this is 60 Hertz. I jump over to 90 and this is more consistent. You notice the actual, that little re uh, refresh on the display kind of ever so slightly disappeared. And if I jump over to 144, uh, basically you'll start noticing that the refresh rate is much faster. It's mostly because of my camera right now, it's only recording at uh, 1080p 60. So this is trying to basically adjust to the fact that this is running at a much higher refresh rate and we can actually see it on the display. Uh, but let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and jump in real quick into a quick game here. Now, right before the game starts, we have the ability of actually turning on the buttons. So those are the touch buttons that we have in here. Those are the two triggers that I showed you guys at the top. And I'm able to basically configure it to be a punch. And of course, uh, since this one's gonna be the punch, I'll put this one on the left for the punch. And then this one will be basically where I do it like a jump or even a crot. And we can actually reconfigure them. So they're on and they're present from here. And you can see it right there. So this gives me the ability of having control. So I'll use my thumbs to be able to do the configuration for basically moving around. I can jump with my right trigger. And of course, I can actually punch with my left trigger. Much nicer, very easy to use. And of course, all of this could be reconfigured once we're in the game, as I'm pretty sure I don't want to keep just doing punch and jump. I'm going to be able to maybe open up the, uh, the backpack or just basically uh, even open up the crosshair section.
And then when you're done, you just flip the switch back and it takes you back into the standard launcher to be able to use your phone the way you want it. Very nice. And again, game centric with a lot of great specifications. My initial impressions of the Red Magic 5G is actually very early since I've only had the device for a very short time. I can tell you right now that this device is trying to push the limit of what the 865 can do on a mobile device. Almost all of the features that were announced at the event at the end of 2019 from Qualcomm for the 865 are packed into this device. 144 hertz display, um, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. We're talking UFS 3.0 with DDR4. We're also talking about the triple camera setup on the back and a camera on the front. Um, we're also obviously seeing here that we're using the X55 for 5G. So all of the things that we want to be able to get out of the 865. Um, overall, as far as the camera experience on the back, as I, you guys saw with the video, uh, we have 8K capability, 4K 60 frames per second. And as far as image samples, I did get a chance to take a few pictures with this. Uh, again, since we're mostly sitting at home and can't really go too far, most of these images are going to be in the backyard. Uh, but hopefully you guys are enjoying looking at them right now. Um, the sound experience is actually really good. We have a customizable RGB button, uh, uh, well, lighting on the back between the logo and the actual strip. Uh, a gaming focus uh, gaming center with optimizations for that as we've seen before from Red Magic. And of course, if you'd like to be able to win one of these devices, they are running an actual competition right now on their site and I'll give you guys a link for that in the description below. But the overall impressions are very positive and I cannot wait to spend some more time playing games on this amazing gaming device. Let me know in the comments below what would you like me to focus on when we actually get a chance to finish up the full review of this device and if you'd like to maybe, well, if you'd like for me to make some separate videos focusing on specific features for this device. Uh, like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video.